All right, good afternoon. Happy uh, bye week to everyone. Uh, coming off solid road win at, at Kansas Start Big 12 play. Um, definitely wasn't our best, um, but credit to our players and staff for finding a way to win that game. Uh, quick game recap, I'll kind of hit on what I think are the, the positives, positives and the negatives from the game, and, and then we'll give out the awards, and then I'll take some questions up. Special teams first, uh, the negatives from the game, uh, our protection, uh, which has been really solid throughout the year, wasn't good enough, in my opinion, on punt or on field goal. Uh, we missed an opportunity to kick off a turn. I thought we had we had one chance there where we could have broken it, and we didn't. Um, and then we got another penalty on the punt return unit. We got to clean that up. Positives, I thought we executed our hands team at the end, which is a big play. Nobody talks about it unless you don't get it, and I thought we did a nice job with that. Um, our specialists, Josh and Evan, both had really good days in the game. And then we had a big punt return by Alex Sinkfield. We blocked it up well, and that started that drive. I think he had a 16-yard return and started the drive right before the half. Um, defensively, the negatives first. We didn't create as many negative plays as we would like to. And, and those negative plays, talk about uh, chaos plays, being sacks, TFLs, uh, not as successful in, in that regard. And then we allowed too much, too many yards rushing. You know, we gave them 4.7 yards per carry. Um, and then we allowed 7.4 yards per play, which is um, which is not going to be good enough in our league. Um, and I didn't like the way we finished the game. I thought the last two drives of the game did not play very well. Uh, the positives are we had two takeaways. I thought uh, Keith Washington's interception was one of the biggest plays of the game. And we started the game off really strong. I mean, we went, there was four series there. Three of them were three and outs. One of them was a four and out. And then we are really good on third down uh, versus Kansas. Offensively, the, the negatives are we didn't have enough explosive plays. Uh, we've got to be able to generate explosive plays as we get into our league schedule. Um, we, we had too many negative yards played, something that we, that we really cleaned up against North Carolina State. But came out this week, I think we had almost 20, 25 yards of negative yardage. We've got to get that cleaned up. And then we've got to score touchdowns in the red zone. Um, you know, Evan had a good day kicking field goals. He was three or four, but we need to score uh, six there rather than, than settling for three. Um, the positive, zero turnovers. Uh, we controlled the game offensively, 85 plays, 37 plus minutes. Uh, ran the ball effectively, 192 yards rushing. And then we answered their scores. I talked about that after the game, but I think that was a, a critical piece of the game is when they scored, we were, not, we were able to answer. And then we were effective on third down. Uh, awards for this week, Evan Staley was Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. Proud of him. Uh, he's had a good year to this point. He's, he was three or four field goals on Saturday. Four of six touchbacks on kickoffs, which are huge. Those don't get talked about as much, but he was four of six touchbacks. Um, our in-house awards, our special teams player of the week, we never double up. So if you win it um, with a lead, we don't we don't necessarily rec we recognize that, but we give a special teams player as well. This week is Josh Chan Chandler, who starts on our kickoff and our punt team. Uh, very very good in production uh, in protection on punt. Uh, and then on kickoff, he had a big tackle on one that we misplaced the kick. And we got some guys out of our lane. He kind of had the, the saving tackle there. Um, our offensive lineman of the week, uh, Colt McKibbins, continues to play at a high level. This week, the award goes to Chase Barrett. Uh, he played every snap. Uh, second week playing at a high level. He played very well against NC State as well. Uh, he was very good at the point of attack in the run game. And uh, he was very productive in, in Coach Moore's uh, grading system. Defensively, our player of the week was Darius Stills. Uh, Played his best game that I've seen him play. A tackle for loss, two pressures, a quarterback hit, um, graded out at 94%. Uh, did a lot of really good things in the game, and really challenged him this week to be consistent or last week to be consistent. And now he's put back-to-back -back games uh, together. Offensively, player of the week was Kennedy McCoy, uh, leading rusher and receiver. Uh, had a great drive. He was instrumental in at the end of the half, where I think five of those touches went to him. Played very well without the ball. Pass protection, uh, perimeter blocking. Um, he's played well two weeks in a row. Scout team players, uh, the week from last week, special teams was Drew Joseph, um, a freshman who's redshirting. Uh, defensively, it was Alonzo Adai, a guy that, that has really done a good job to this point uh, through fall camp up until now. Uh, he's sitting out the year. Uh, then offensively is Lorenzo Dole. And, we put a lot on him uh, to give us a look last week for those running backs. Uh, Kansas had two great running backs. We talked about them at length, and he did a good job without preparing our, our defense. Uh, the Juice Award, uh, this goes, this was 
Uh, we had we had really good juice. I know some of those videos went around the sideline, but Jake Abbott for his air guitar, he stole the show, so he had the best juice of the of the games. We get the juice award, and then last but not least, George Campbell, who uh, I've talked about a lot, being a, a quality addition to our program for a lot of different reasons, but he gets our community service award. And uh, so those are the awards. Uh, wrapping up the game, that was a good win, uh, but we've got to play uh, considerably better to to win as we continue through our league. Um, I wasn't particularly pleased with how we played. Um, I was proud of the fact that, that we were able to win the game and not be at our best. Um, we didn't have a great week of practice last week, and I, I thought it showed we did not handle prosperity very well. I think that's something that young teams have to overcome. Um, we did find a way to win, but we've got to do a better job in preparation and practice. Um, on another note, before we talk about the bye, uh, Josh Seals had season-ending surgery yesterday, so he will, he will miss the remainder of the year. Um, and hate that for him, but um, necessary and for, for him. And he's recovering well. Um, bye week is here, and it comes at a really good time for us. Uh, this is a critical week for our development. We put a lot of time into developing our younger players during this week, and, and so this is, this is a key to that. And then we'll spend a lot of time at the end of the week uh, recruiting as a staff. So with that, I'll open up for questions. Start with the recruiting. Um, how's it going? Everybody go out, you hit, you hit everything, what do you do this Yeah, week? so what we'll do is you get a certain number of days, and the NCAA allows you a certain number of days. So we'll use the biggest chunk of those days this during this bye week and then our next bye week. Um, we'll do some during Fridays before home games. Um, but uh, we'll be out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, a few coaches will be out all three days, but most of them either one or two days over that, that period. Uh, seeing 20, 20 recruits, either guys that are committed or guys that – um, that we're heavily involved with, and then also going to get some live evaluation of 21 recruits as well. You mentioned <clears throat> window dressing a little bit to move the ball. Is this about what you normally do, or is this a little bit more than you've had to do in the past in other places um, to, to try to move the ball a little bit? Yeah, we're having to window dress a little bit. You have to reinvent yourself a little bit every each and every week. Uh, we had to do that last year um, once our starter got hurt. Uh, so. Um, uh, it's probably more so in the, you know, from the middle of the season last year, uh, Troy and, and through the first, really we didn't do it week one, but week two, three, and four, uh, it's probably more so than we would normally do, yeah. Has there been any discussion about going for a sixth year for Josh, or is that going to be something down the road? Yeah, down the road. Yeah, down the road. Um, haven't had those talks, like I said. Um, he's going he's gonna to miss this year. And we'll kind of, as he recovers, we'll kind of figure out what's, what's next. Now you talked about explosive plays. What do you guys have to do to get downfield passing? To yeah. Connect on those little we cool complete them, Keenan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, it, you know, we, I think we called, and I'm going off my, I think we called either six or seven of them in the game. And, um, and we just didn't connect. It was, we really didn't, we didn't connect. And, so we've got to do a better job schematically, putting ourselves in a better position from a coaching perspective. And then we've got to do a better job of winning on routes and then uh, throwing the ball downfield better. You know, um, we've been hitting this as we've gone through the year. It hadn't been a strength for sure. It's something once we play, especially these teams that are prolific offensively, that you know we're not going to be able to kind of grind out wins. I'm not naive. I understand kind of what we got coming. So we're going to have to hit some of those big plays rather than counting on 9, 10, 11 play drives and score touchdowns. Can you say uh, what injury was on Josh? You know, whether it was late or young? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to stay away from it. It was, I mean, it was a normal football injury. All right. Um, some of that stuff, hip a lot, I got to be careful with. And the delay in getting the surgery from the time he had the injury until now, was that uh, trying, yeah, to, trying to see if he could play or? No, there wasn't. There wasn't a long delay. He actually he had a minor injury that kept him out the first um, the first game that he missed. I guess that would have been North Carolina State. And this injury has been something that's been lingering. With with him no longer available, depth wise, how you develop depth up front? He's try to push a couple more than have to play. Yeah. So you know, in the game on on Saturday, we really meant to play go six at least seven. We ended up playing the whole way with five. And I think that's just because we got off to a good start. Uh, Coach Moore felt more comfortable playing those five. I think you'll see John Hughes continue to play. Um, I think you'll see Mike Brown um, definitely uh, get some get some snaps to get in the rotation. Uh, Junior is a guy that we've we've been repping a lot. 
he plays behind Colton. Um, and then we've got Blaine Scott's a guy that has shown some flashes. Uh, Still, he's, excuse me, he's backing up Bryson Lee in center. And then, um, you know, we're giving uh, a lot of work to, to Brandy Yates and Parker Moore as well. You know, they're not necessarily ready now, but toward the last part, piece of the season, they, may, may, they, they very well may be. You know, we want to redshirt those guys with the four game rule. Last year, maybe give them some action later in the year if need be. So a little bit about what it takes from going to being, from being the starting center to not playing to filling that guard and now playing the way Chase is playing. Yeah, I think it says a lot about him. You know, he uh, you know lost a starting position uh, during fall camp, um, and really that was that was based on more some erratic snaps than it was basically in, in pass protection order. Uh, and run blocking, um, and then he and then he came back and he played against Missouri um, at center. Um, but then, really, since then, since moving back and we got him locked in on one spot at, at that right guard spot, he really came. You know, he didn't play particularly well against Missouri. I think he he took the coaching. He he, he his work ethic. Um, you know, maybe from an investment standpoint, as far as getting prepared to play. And then, really, he's had two great weeks of practice, and he's played at a high level. Neil, I believe it was after the Missouri game you said something about wanting to get more carries for Alex Singfield going forward. We mm -hmm. haven't really seen that in these last well, few games. Have plans changed for him? Or is well, he started the game. He started the game against North Carolina State. Um, he's, had, he's, he's had a little bit of a lower um, leg injury that's kind of limited him. He had, that's, and that's one of the main reasons. I think his bye week would be good for him to get back fully healthy. But he did, he did start, but he started more John speaking. How important was it that the development and, and Lay Brown and, and Martell coming in and giving me that power football? Right. Yeah, we were able to do that. Um, I thought Kansas played really physical. You know, there's a couple shots where they really came down and hit um, um, Letty and, and Petaway, and those are big physical running backs, you know. Um, but that, that trio that ran the ball on Saturday, Thought they did a nice job. They were decisive, and that's that was kind of what was missing from the running back room the first two weeks. And we just weren't very decisive. We kind of, you know, paused in the hole a little bit, kind of ran east and west. And now what you're seeing is guys putting their foot in the ground, getting behind the pads, being physical, finishing runs, and being decisive. And so I thought Letty has, has, has done some really good things the last two weeks, kind of getting back. You know, he missed about three weeks there. Um, and you can see him kind of getting his timing back. And he adds something to that room just because he is big, he is physical. He's a guy that it's, it's hard to bring down. And then Petaway, I talked about this after the game, I thought he had a really good week last week. I think that speaks to him being mature. I think it's a, it's a great learning tool for some of our younger players. Um, he didn't mope. Um, he accepted it, didn't like it, but he accepted it, came back, went to work. Um, and gave himself an opportunity in the game. When he got that opportunity, he made the most of it. How do you this attack this more, week? Is this week more about your addressing the things that you talked about at the top, or you trying to get a little bit of a head start on the next time? Yeah, we'll, we'll work a little bit of Texas. Um, uh, we'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we'll work a little bit of Texas, but a lot of it's centered around us. We'll do some good on good work. Uh, I think it's about, during this bye week, it's about efficiency and your time. Like, um, we gave the guys off Sunday and Monday. Uh, they'll also have Friday and Saturday off. So we'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's about efficiency, have them in and out. Um, we'll review the game today and we'll, and we'll practice. Um, but try to be out there for about an hour with our veterans and then keep our development guys out and in, in, do some controlled scrimmaging, not necessarily tackling, but doing some controlled scrimmaging for them over the next three days, get them a lot of repetitions. Um, so it'll be, a, it'll be a more so working on us, but also looking ahead getting a few reps on some things that Texas does. Yeah, um, the long break is kind of neat, but you play a whole bunch of games with that Saturday, Thursday turnaround. Mm -hmm. It's really short. I don't, I don't think you lost one. How unique is that quick turnaround? The There's quick, hardly any time in between games. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we lost one my first year, I think, at Troy, and then we um, then we put a lot of time in it. I may be wrong. You know, my mind goes a little bit. But uh, the – you're asking about the short term, right? kind of like three days. Of the yeah. Three days of so we always heard at Troy on on um, less time, less practice time, and really concentrated on walkthroughs and, and mental mental preparation. We really had when we were playing on the short week. We really had one what we call normal practice. Okay. So what we would do is we would try to have 
somewhat of a normal practice on Monday where um, depending on what part of the year, if it was early in the year we wear shells, if it was later in the year we just wore helmets, but we practice at a, at, a, at a good rate. But then the rest of the week was basically jog through, walk through deal, concentrating on being fresh. Um, and then in, uh, the other thing also at Troy, Mike, was is we played a lot of, uh, so we would have a Saturday, may not play until Tuesday, or Saturday or Thursday, like we have, you know, a, a Saturday in between, am I making sense? Yeah. So we would work ahead on opponents a little bit as well. Hey Neil, um, I just noticed a lot of communication issues, but running a guy out for the, the two-point conversion at the end, the first time I really started getting Yeah, when I got pissed, those come <laughs> 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 You hit it well, but they something cost you. Yeah. Um, I, knew my mom, I knew my mom was watching. <laughs> is that something that the off week afford? Nah, is that natural? Yeah, here's the deal. Is so you tell everybody you're going to go for two, because we knew we were going to go for two. All right? um, we started the drive, um, so everybody knows you're going to go for two. And you get down there, and we hit a third and five uh, run, pedal away scores. Coaches get excited, players get excited and we don't get the right personnel in the field, so we had to use a timeout. Um, my opinion is, if we don't use that timeout, we'll probably get the two-point play, but because we had sub, that's something that we've kind of done in the past, and they're well coached over there, so they were able to coach their kids up on it once we use the timeout. Um, but you don't want to take that penalty and move it back five. So um, that was really the only communication piece, um, and, and that's more from excitement rather than from preparation. You know, you got two of the true freshmen in Jennings and Wright both played mm -hmm. again. Have you made decisions on what their future is moving forward, or will you redshirt? No, I think that if, if everything stays the same as it is right now, I think both of them moving forward will continue to play. Um, Winston played, I think, 41 snaps in the game, um, and he showed some improvement. Um, you know, Ali, he, he probably played the best as far as our outside receivers, his X to Z position. He, he was probably. He probably played and graded out the highest of any of those guys. So um, if everything stays the same, we will continue to, to play both of those guys, yes. Can you uh, discuss a little bit the progress you've seen in your quarterback since since you got here and you know, looked at him? Well, I think on Saturday it probably wasn't his best, but I thought he did a good job managing the game. I thought the, the drive before half uh, was was really well done by him. Um, he, he managed the clock. Uh, he was efficient in his throws. He went to where the ball needed to go. Uh, so I think he's improving. Um, and just like I was telling Keenan, our next step is we've got to get the ball downfield. You know, and that's something that, that he knows he's got to improve on. And we've got to improve on, again, we've got to improve on our protection on those downfield throws. We've got to improve on, on schematically setting up those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And we've got to improve on getting open. Okay, so I think that's pit, bits and pieces everywhere. But he's definitely part of that equation. Um, but he's shown improvement. Can he play better? Yes. Um, has has he? I think that he has made marked improvements since the opening game of JMU. All right. And I think some of that's just shaking off some rust where he had played so long. When the opposing coach says he didn't think he'd be that good, is that an insult or a compliment to how much improvement he has? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really pay. I saw the only time I saw that honestly was uh, on that video that we released yesterday. I wouldn't even know it if we didn't. Um, so we released that video from, and our video people do a really good job. I should, I should note that as I talk about um, led, led the Austin games. They do a really good job. Alan showed him 